Well, um, Dobre Ono i Stratvitia, good morning and greetings from um, the amazing people of Ukraine. And um, I'm so excited to be back in America. It's nice to have um, American luxuries. It's nice to speak without a translator everywhere I go. It's nice to worship in my own native tongue. But mostly what I'm excited about is just to share um, what God did in Ukraine the six weeks I was there. Um, through your support and your prayers that sent me to Ukraine. Um, it was an incredible time, and I cannot share everything in just a few minutes, but I'm going to do my best to give you an overview of what God did, um, again, through your support and prayers through me in Ukraine. Um, go to the next slide, please. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is just thank you. I cannot tell you how many Ukrainians were shocked that a church in a small town in Utah would care enough about them to send funds and to send people to share the gospel and to support them in that way. And um, I was repeatedly asked to bring back their thanks, and I wanted to do that. Um, if you see the big group, of the picture with the big group, that was a very unique experience in Ukraine. We've never gotten to do that before, but um, that picture represents believers from all different regions in Ukraine where movements have begun for the gospel. And we all got to get together for about 10 days. Um, we started with some discipleship, and then we had a big English project where there was 180 unbelievers of um, between the ages of 15 and 30 that were there that we got to just um, invest in, and it was amazing. They got to have a worship band, which they don't often get to do because there's just not enough believers in small groups there. And it was just an incredible experience. So I just wanted to point that out as I go on. Um, go on to the next slide, please. Uh, this is Ukraine. Um, the city in the bottom is Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And it is um, what you see. It's tall, gray Soviet Union buildings. Um, the buildings, the individual building, that's where I stayed as kind of my base when I was in Kiev. Um, it's not real glamorous, and it's not real glamorous on the inside. Um, the person that I stayed with, her name is Ksenia Shakovka. And she is my age. She's a believer. Um, she accepted Christ in college about eight years ago. And she um, is a missionary. And she survives off of um, fellow Ukrainians that give her money monthly. And that's where she can afford to live. Um, she lives at the very top of that building with no elevator. And so I got strong quad muscles going up and down that thing a lot. It was pretty intense. It's not bad unless you have 50 pounds of luggage, and then it's not real fun. But um, that's where I stayed. Um, then I'd be there maybe for a few days, and then we'd go off to a new region in Ukraine, and then we would come back. So it was just constant fluid movement during the six weeks um, that I was there. Uh, life is hard in Ukraine. The, um, there's a very real war going on. Um, their economy is just tanked right now, and the government is very corrupt. So it's a very sad and hopeless nation, and um, it was such a blessing to me to be able to be there and not be able to fix their government or fix their economy, but share Jesus with them. And that's really what my goal was, and that's really what you sent me for. And um, I'm just so grateful. Um, I was able to leave Ksenia with some of the funds that you sent with me, and so she will be able to continue her ministry for a few months um, without the fear that she's not going to have enough money to pay her rent, and she's not going to have enough money to eat for a few months, and that was a big blessing to me, and I know that it is to you as well. Um, go to the next slide, please. This is the other part of Ukraine that I was in, um, villages, and villages are even less glamorous than the city. Um, if any of you have seen Fiddler on the Roof, just imagine living in that setting. Um, we would walk to villages and do a lot of street evangelism, a lot of meeting with believers and encouraging there, and um, that's kind of where I was. Um, I had, you can go ahead to the next slide. There are three main opportunities that I had to serve God in Ukraine. Um, the first one was through evangelism, and I um, just want to thank you for your prayers, because one thing I prayed for that I asked you guys to pray for was that God would give me boldness, and that every day would be useful for Christ. And I, um, just feel like God answered that prayer. I am not a naturally bold person, and I shared the gospel more in those six weeks than I ever have before. It was truly incredible. Um, 
What you see in the top left is um, some cards I was working with with a girl, and those are perspective cards that I actually learned from some Ukrainians how to use. And they are incredible because it's a very easy way to kind of get an idea of somebody's worldview without making them feel pressured or uncomfortable or judged. Um, and I just absolutely loved it. I used it a lot. Um, and then in the bottom right corner, you see me with another girl I'm writing. Um, and what I'm writing is um, a gospel diagram. And it's a very simple way that you can share the gospel in five minutes. That's a picture of it. And um, it's, a, it's an amazing tool. And if any of you want to learn how to use that tool, I would love to share it because it is a fast and easy way to share the gospel with complete strangers or with close friends. I absolutely loved using it. Um, We had an English camp where we brought in 180 students ages 15 to 30, and we shared the gospel with them. Um, We did this through teaching English. I taught English for about five to six hours a day during many of the times that I was in Ukraine. And then I also got the time to have a lot of one-on-one time with um, these students and really share the gospel with them. Um, One thing that was so exciting to me that I didn't get to do last year, but I got to do this year because um, VCC was so generous in giving, was we got to bring in 10 unbeliever students from the um, Donetsk region, which is where the biggest part of the war is right now. And we were able to pay for their transportation, for their lodging, for their food, and even a stipend if they had to miss their summer jobs. And they were able to come to this camp for 10 days and hear the gospel every day and just have a break from this raging war that was going on in their lives. And um, out of those 10, I know personally that four of them accepted Christ, which was amazing. And um, I'm not as sure about the others, but um, they, I know, have believers that are in those areas that have gotten to do follow-up. And with the new believers, there's discipleship going on. And so that work is continuing, and it's just so exciting to me. Um, Another thing with this English camp, we, a very unique thing, I went with Ukrainians into villages near where we did this camp in western Ukraine. And... um, I would go up and start talking to them in English, which shocked people because they've never heard, seen an American or talked to an American before, and they became very interested in just hearing from me. And if they spoke a little bit of English, I'd try to share the gospel with them. If not, I had Ukrainians who would come up and then take over. It was an amazing just teamwork activity. Um, then we would invite them to English club. And 45 young high school kids from those Um, villages were able to come to this English camp, and 25 of those kids accepted Christ during those 10 days alone. It was so incredible. I just, it was, just made my heart very happy. So that was a big um, area that I was able to serve there um, through your funds of bringing those students from the war zones and able to go out, and then also just through your prayers. Um, It was incredible. The last main area, you can go to the next slide, please that I was able to um, participate in in Ukraine was children's ministry. And I was telling someone just yesterday, um, Kiev, which is the capital of Ukraine again, has about 4 million people in it. And there are over 200,000 homeless and orphan children in that area alone in Ukraine. Um, that's due to abandonment. It's due to the war. It's due to the health care system that is very corrupt. Um, they, Ukrainians do not have a very long life expectancy. Um, orphanages are not well kept. They're all government run. Um, students are not allowed to go to school. They're not taught things. It, it's a very sad situation. Often they're kicked out because of overcrowding between the ages of 14 and 16. And um, it's just a really sad situation. So we were able to go, and um, I was able to get in contact with a retired Marine American who lives in Ukraine and um, works in um, orphanages. And he has a car, which is very unique in Ukraine, especially among believers, because vehicles are for the elite. Um, And I was able to go with him in his car, and we went to a nearby town, and we were able to use some of the funds that you had sent with me to buy over 400 Bibles in Russian and Ukrainian, um, some journals in Russian and Ukrainian, and some gospel coins. And we were able to go into a lot of different um, orphanages and facilities. You can go on to the next slide. Um, and we were able to give Bibles to these kids that really don't own anything, let alone 
something as valuable as a Bible. And they'd never, like, heard about Jesus or heard the good news. And we got to go in. Um, it, it was very unique in Ukraine. They, were, they didn't have to come out. We would just meet, and they'd come outside to the parking lot. And just whoever wanted to would come out. We'd have anywhere from 50 to 200 kids out there. Um, the adults would be myself, maybe this other American sometimes when he could come, and then one or two Ukrainians uh, with, you know, 50 to 200 kids, and they would just sit down and they would listen, and they loved to hear about Jesus. And so um, I got to share the gospel through a translator, share a lot of Bible stories, and they would just eat it up and listen. And then anybody who was interested, we could give a Bible to. The Ukrainians could talk one-on-one sharing the gospel. We marked on all those Bibles. Um, a lot of um, verses that we would find, like, found valuable anytime we were traveling. That's what we'd be doing is marking verses for these kids so that they kind of had a basis because they'd never heard of Jesus before. We wanted them to be able to take these Bibles if they were able to read and have it really a basis point. So we did that. Then for the last, like, 20 minutes, I'd teach them how to throw a Frisbee, which they'd never done before in their life, um, teach them maybe how to make a bracelet. I, I had a few supplies with me. I ran out of those really quickly. But just spent time with them and loved them. And um, it was just it was awesome. So um, you can go to the next slide. Um, that was a very, very brief overview, but I don't want to take all your time. But if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. If you have um, just anything else I can share with you, just please come and see me. Um, I'd just like to leave you with um, just the request to continue to pray for Ukraine because I'm back in America and I adjusted quickly to getting my coffee in the morning and sleeping in a nice bed, which I did not do all summer. But they are still there. They're serving the Lord. Um, they, these are the majority of the believers there are my age or younger, and they choose to leave their jobs and serve as missionaries. They don't have a mission base like we have where they can raise support. So they have friends and family that will give them money monthly. But the economy is so bad that they may get promised a certain amount, and they may not get that. And so it's very challenging. But they, I just kept thinking of them as Pastor Marty was speaking today. They really just give God everything. They trust God with everything, and it's a huge blessing. Um, we were able to leave money with several missionaries who are just getting started. And... Um, have very little support, but just want to share the gospel, and um, that was a huge encouragement to them. Um, there are ways that we can continue to support some of those people. If that's something you're interested in, please let me know, and I'd be happy to um, help you with that, but really just please pray for them. Please remember Ukraine, and pray for the people who accepted Christ this summer. Um, the believers that I know are very diligent in discipling them, and um, encouraging them in the Lord, and just just pray that um, the gospel will continue to fly through Ukraine because it, it's a hard time there, and um, that's the only hope that we we can give them because that's really the only hope they have right now. Um, so thank you again so much for your prayers. I felt them every single day. Um, this was the hardest summer of my life. Uh, we had we our days were usually about eighteen hours long, and then we'd go and sleep in a very hot room on a very hard floor or mat. It was very challenging, um, and that's their lives every single day. It's not a short-term thing, and I'd just love for you to continue to pray for them, and just thank you again so much for your prayers and for sending me and your finances that um, went very far as I was in Ukraine.